Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. Welcome to today's anatomy and physiology lesson. Today we're gonna to talk about the respiratory system. And if you don't already know me, my name is Leah and I'm your lead course instructor here at ACT. So the respiratory system, we all know that it helps us breathe um, and is very important for oxygen. Um, so, but the main functions of the respiratory system include, uh, of course, the oxygen supplier, like as we just mentioned, and um, the job of the respiratory system is to keep the body constantly supplied with oxygen. It also um, helps with elimination, so elimination specifically of carbon dioxide, and the respiratory system functions um, with the help of gas exchange and the respiratory um, systems organs facilitate that gas exchange that occurs between the blood and the external environment. Um, also functions of the respiratory system include passageways, which passageways that allow air to actually reach the lungs and also helps as a humidifier to help purify, humidify, and warm incoming air. So components of the respiratory system include uh, the upper respiratory tract and the lower respiratory tract. Um, the upper respiratory tract includes the nose, the pharynx, the larynx, the organs of the upper respiratory tract are also located um, outside the chest cavity. Conversely, the lower respiratory tract um, these uh, organs are located inside the chest cavity and they include the trachea, the lungs, um, all segments of the bronchial tree, including the alveoli or alveoli, I should say. So uh, the upper respiratory system, we're just gonna take a little bit of a closer look at, at it here. Um, includes the nasal cavity as we mentioned. So inside the nose, we all know there's a sticky mucosa, mem membrane lining that helps to uh, trap dust, particles, dirt, sometimes insects, <laughs> and, and these tiny hairs um, called cilia then help to move them to the nose to be sneezed or blown out. And then we have sinuses. Our sinus cavities are air-filled spaces along the side of our nose that help to make uh, our skull lighter. Then we have the pharynx, which both food and air passes through um, the pharynx before reaching their appropriate destinations. Of course, the food then passes to the esophagus and then into the stomach, but um, air goes um, from the pharynx down into uh, the trachea and the lungs. And then we have the larynx, and this is um, essential for human speech. It helps us talk. So uh, the lower respiratory tract, um, you can see a diagram of it here. So some of these organs that we're gonna talk about, um, the trachea located just below the larynx, um, and this is the main airway to the lungs. Then of course we have the lungs, and together the lungs form one of the body's largest organs, and they're responsible for providing oxygen to capillaries and exhaling carbon dioxide. We have the bronchi and the bronchial branch from the trachea into um, the trachea into each lung and they create a network of intricate passages that supply the lungs with air and then we of course have the diaphragm and the diaphragm is the main respiratory muscle that contracts and relaxes to allow air into our lungs. So we're gonna talk specifically about the lungs here right now, just because the lungs are actually the center of the respiratory system. Um, so as we've been discussing throughout uh, the beginning of this um, lesson, that the lungs take in oxygen, uh, which is obviously vital for the body's cells to live and carry out their normal functions. Um, the lungs also help to get rid of the carbon dioxide, which is a waste product of the cells. 
the lungs are cone shaped as you can see here in this picture um, and they're made up of like a spongy pinkish gray tissue and they take up most of the space in the chest cavity. The lungs are separated by uh, the mediastinum, an area that contains the heart and its and the heart's large vessels, the trachea, the esophagus, the thymus gland, and also the lymph nodes. So here's a diagram of um, lung anatomy. So of course we have the apex at the top of the lungs, and this is just um, the apex of the lung is actually just uh, below the clavicle bone, um, as you can see right here. You have the base of the lung, which is the bottom of the lung area, and this is resting on the diaphragm, the base of the lung. The division, so each lung is divided into lobes by fissures. The left lung has two lobes and the right lung has three lobes. So the left lung only has two lobes because it needs to make room for the heart, which is on the left side as well. Then we have the bronchioles, and this is the smallest of the conducting passageways. And then we have the alveoli, and these um, terminal, the terminal bronchioles. So the bronchioles lead to the respiratory, what they call the respiratory zone structures, and then even smaller conduits that eventually terminate into the alveoli or air sacs. So continuing on with the anatomy of the lungs, so you have pleural fluid. So the pleural membranes produce a pleural fluid. So it's like a slippery, serious secretion that allows the lungs to glide easily over the thorax while during breathing movements. So, you know, it just helps with that friction, allowing the lungs um, to inhale and exhale. Um, easily, and it causes the two pleural layers to cling together. Then we have the pleural space. In the pleural space, the lungs are held tightly to the thorax wall, and the pleural space is more of a potential space than an actual one. And then we have the pleura, and this, uh, the pleura is the surface of each lung is covered with a visceral serosa called the pulmonary or visceral pleura, and the walls of the thoracic cavity are lined um, with the parietal pleura. So here is um, a diagram here, what I was just speaking about earlier, a few slides back of the respiratory zone. So. As I mentioned to you, we have the bronchi that then, we have bronchioles that branch off from the bronchi. And at the end of each bronchial is this alveolar sac. And this is where, um, this, this is the site of gas exchange. And when I say gas exchange, I mean the exchange of um, oxygen and carbon dioxide. That's where this happens here in these alveolar sacs at the end of these bronchioles that are in the lung. So just a little bit of detail about respiration. So the major function of the respiratory system, as we've been talking about, is to supply the body with oxygen and dispose of carbon dioxide. So for this to occur, four very distinct actions um, must happen collectively known as respiration. And these include first there's pulmonary ventilation. So air must move into and out of the lungs. So gases in the air sacs that we just spoke about are continuously refreshed. And this process is commonly known as breathing. And then we have external respiration. So gas exchange between the pulmonary blood and the alveoli must take place. Next, we have respiratory gas transport. So oxygen and carbon dioxide must be transported to and from the lungs and the tissue cells of the, bo of the body via the bloodstream. And then lastly, we have the internal respiration. So at, um, in systemic capillaries, gas exchanges must be made between the blood and the tissue cells.
So gas transport and exchange. So we touched on this two slides back in the respiratory zone. Um, this is just a little bit more detail about it. So of course we have the alveoli here again, and this is just a diagram of actual gas exchange, meaning the pickup of oxygen and the, um, the waste of carbon dioxide. So um, an external respiration or pulmonary gas exchange involves the oxygen being loaded here and the carbon, carbon dioxide being unloaded here. Internal respiration or systemic capillary gas exchange, get oxygen is then unloaded and carbon dioxide is loaded into the blood. And then with gas transport, oxygen is transported into the blood in two ways. First, by attaching to hemoglobin molecule, molecules inside the red blood cells to formulate what's known as oxyhemoglobin, or a very small amount of oxygen is actually carried, dissolved in our plasma of our blood. And while carbon dioxide is transported in plasma as bicarbonate ion, or a smaller amount is carried inside red blood cells bound to the hemoglobin. So mechanics of breathing seems very simple. We do it all day, every day, um, without even knowing it. But um, so volume changes lead to pressure to pressure changes, which lead to the flow of gases to equalize pressure. So that's the rule of the mechanics of breathing. So with inspiration, when you're taking a deep breath in, air is flowing into the lungs, your chest is expanded, the rib cage is elevated, and the diaphragm is actually depressed and flattened. Lungs are stretched to the larger thoracic volume while air flows into the lungs. With expiration, of course, when you're breathing out, air is leaving the lungs. The chest is depressed, the rib cage is smaller, and the diaphragm is now open or elevated. Our lungs recoil to the smaller volume and air flows out of the lung. Then there's something known as intrapulmonary volume, and this is the actual volume that's left within the lungs. We have intrapleural pressure, and this normal pressure within the pleural space, um, the intrapleural pressure is always negative. So um, this is a major factor preventing um, our lungs from collapsing. And then we have non-respiratory air movements, so a result of like a reflex, a reflex activity such as um, hiccups or laughing, crying, yawning. So it's important to understand respiratory volume and capacities when we talk about the respiratory system. So something known as tidal volume um, tidal volume is normal, quiet breathing, which moves approximately 500 ml of air into and out of the lungs with each breath. So that's tidal volume, just normal, quiet breathing. Inspiratory reserve volume is the amount of air that can be taken in forcibly over the tidal volume, so over what normal breathing is which is normally between 2,100 mLs and 3,200 mLs. Then we have the expiratory result, result reserve volume, and this is the amount of air that can be forcibly exhaled after a tidal expiration. So after a normal expiration, the expiratory reserve volume can force out approximately 1,200 mLs more there and then we have the residual volume so um, there's always about 1200 mls of air that remain in the lungs um, and that cannot be voluntarily expelled so this is called residual volume and it is uh, it's important because it allows gas exchange to go on continuously even between breaths and helps to keep the alveoli inflated And just continuing on with respiratory volume and capacities, we have vital capacity. And this is the total amount of exchangeable air that is typically around 40 
100 mLs in healthy young men. And this respiratory capacity is incredibly important um, for a vital capacity, which is the sum of the tidal volume, inspiratory resolve, reserve volume, and the expiratory reserve volume which is vital capacity. So the sum of those three things, tidal volume, inspiratory reserve volume, and the expiratory reserve volume. We also have dead space volume. So much of the air that enters the respiratory tract remains in the conducting zone passageways and never actually reaches the alveoli. So this is called the dead space volume and during a normal tidal breath, so Again, normal tidal breath is just a normal inspiration. Its amount is about 150 mLs. We have functional volume. Functional volume is um, the air that reaches the respiratory zone and contributes to gas exchange. And then we have spirometers. So respiratory capacities are measured, of course, with, with a spirometer. Um, we should all probably know that by now. So where and so when a person breathes, the volume of air exhaled can be read on this indicator, which the indicator, which is the spirometer, which shows the changes in air volume inside the apparatus. So a kind of short but very important uh, anatomy lesson here about uh, the respiratory system and the lungs especially. Again, if you have any questions or concerns or you need anything cleared up for you, you know that you can always email me or you can um, set up a schedule office hours with me on my Calendly um, appointment book. So I will I'll see you all again very soon. I hope you have a wonderful evening.